what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it. Uh, how about Garrett Nussmeyer, huh? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, good at football. Yeah. Pretty good at how football. How we feeling? Good. Pretty good. The leader of the Nuss bus here, Matt uh-huh. Flynn, certified CDL driver for many yeah. years now. Tooting that horn. Um, how do you, so we're in a bye week, right? It's kind of a moment to reflect. Five games sucks. Already five games in, man. It bums me out. But five games in, and now the real season starts. SEC play, Ole Miss, nighttime at Tiger Stadium, seven SEC games in a row. I think it's so easy to forget that this is Nuss's first year starting. And so, like, the room for improvement and the strides he'll make, there, there's so much out there. How do you feel, though? What grade would you give him after five weeks? What grade would I give him? Uh, good question. You don't have to do uh, the grade thing if you don't. Yeah, play. I don't know if I want to do the grade thing, but he's been playing. Wow. He's been Coward. playing. Uh, I can give him a grade. A double A plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he does drive the bus. Um, Everybody on. Good. Great. Grand. He's, what, what's really cool about it I is you can see his improvement yeah. every week. And so what are you he, seeing? Like in what, in what areas? So Jake and I are on, on a little group text, and somebody sent some um, – two throws that he made back-to-back in this last game. And I saw it live. Like, I went to the game, and we were on row four right behind the bench. So, like, I couldn't see anything. So, I was watching, like, the Jumbotron for the first half. (laughs) But, like, so I didn't really see these plays at the game. But he made two throws back-to-back that were, like, elite NFL-level type throws. Now, everyone can make – Mason Taylor, Aaron Anderson throws? Yeah, there's always, like – There's – every quarterback can make – Throws that are like, oh, that was that was incredible, right? Everyone does that, but he's shown that he can consistently do it. But uh, he threw the the confidence level that he's playing with, like you could just see it kind of growing each and every each and every week. Even like his back and forth with, like, watch if you watch closely the back and forth of Brian Kelly. It's a confident kid playing out there. Yeah, uh, did y'all see the argument last yeah. week with yeah, the, yeah. the delay game, yeah, and, uh, timeout situation, but. Even watching him interact with the head coach, you could just see his confidence level building and building and building. Um, Kelly actually talked about that as well during his press conference, the the interaction, and just talk about look, they have a great relationship, and Garrett is sometimes he's he's one of those players that responds really well to being leaned on a bit mm-hmm. when the time is right. So um, and and he's like, you can't coach somebody like that all the time. But yeah, that was that was a time where you know Kelly wanted to get his point across. And to your point, you don't want to see your quarterback crumble in that moment. You know, you want to see your quarterback also. Like I, I like seeing them both kind of yeah, how, no, how no, that whole great. thing went it, down. But like the, but these this is a very small thing, right? We're talking about, but it this really small thing paints a really big picture. So it's one interaction. But I'm watching interactions on the sideline or you know TV timeouts or whatever almost as much as I can on TV because it shows the con- – like, he's not doing that at USC. Like, he's not chirping back at yeah. Kelly like yeah. about, about like, I, I got it. I would have gotten the play out. Like, yeah, yeah. he's not doing that. So, that shows the confidence level. Um, I remember getting to a point and hearing stories about, like, Rohan and, and watching watching Jamar, like, and, and doing it myself with, like, Jimbo. It's like once – Jimbo would push you to the brink, right, yeah. and yell at you. As soon as you snapped back and gave it back to him, he was like, all right. Yeah. All right, I like oh, it. Oh, really? okay. Like so it, he needed I mean? to. He needed you to. But, no, but it just shows like a like you're comfortable. You're comfortable in your skin. You're comfortable in your uniform. You're comfortable where you're at and where you're going. And uh, you know, you're just seeing that. And then you saw it on those two throws. I mean, I keep thinking uh, I think about it's how Mason you... Taylor running up the seam. Yeah, it is. It gets yeah. covered too, right over the top, and the safety. It's an it's an NFL throw because he's not open by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But he is, he's wide open because the defender's got your back turned. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Was, and then the Aaron Anderson throw, wasn't that covered too as well in the seam? Right. It yeah. might have been a post, a but it was throw. like was dropped. That t- it was mm. right after that would drop the middle. It's like it's what you said last week. And it's exactly what I thought about during the game when I saw those throws. You talked about how some quarterbacks uh just see it. They see it ahead of time. Like they know, and it, it especially I feel like throwing over the middle against zone. Mm-hmm. Where like a guy's body and how they're turned and and the timing of like breaking behind a guy like some guys just see it and and Nuss definitely yeah. has that vision. And what's cool about watching it and I and and, and I can 
I can watch it now because I kind of live through it. It's like when you get so comfortable with your personnel, your plays, you're watching the defense. You're not watching because you know where your guys are going to be. So you have to, you're watching that. And he could, he probably couldn't even see Mason Taylor. Yeah. Because the guy was right in between him. True. But you're looking straight at that backer and saying, all right, I see the back of his helmet. That means my guy's wide open. That's crazy. So you're watching him. That's so crazy. Because you're just comfortable with your read, what you've seen the safeties do, your pre snap looks, uh, your film study, and everything. I remember watching Aaron Rodgers make that throw my rookie year in practice. And it was like a euphoric experience. Hmm. I was like, what? So that wasn't was like, in your bag in college? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, bud. That was like something. I was like, wait, you? I can make that throw? Like, I can do that? Wow. Like, he didn't look. I, I looked at Aaron in film study. And I was like, hey, why'd you throw that? And he just looked at me. He's like, because he's open. I'm like, why is he open? He's so Defense, he's not looking at me. How can he? intercept it if he's not looking at me that's so interesting that i've never really thought about i mean i know you're of course you're always looking at the defender's hips flipped you know anything like that but like i've never considered that you're not really looking at the receiver because everything's timing based you know where he's going to be like the spot he's going to be at so so right so so you're starting pre-snap recognition you're looking at what defense they think you think they're in are you thinking about your matchups that you may potentially like i don't even know what defense i'm assuming they were in some sort of two man there you go Check this out. Were there safeties on the Mason Taylor one in the middle? I can't not remember. Definitely on no. the Aaron Nugget. Not, not making the middle. Yeah. In the middle. They, were, they were separate. Aaron Anderson, he hit underneath the that's safeties over the top. Just, just All right. We wanna, you want to you break down these plays for us, Matt? You know, because I'm kind of tired, so I don't really want to do anything. So maybe uh, put this up on the screen. and Like, you can. You, you can, go ahead. Wow. Uh, I told you I got to go to book fair, so you're going to have to. So I'm saying I got to conserve up. my energy hour three. Uh, Taylor, yeah, you I can put him up from that angle. Oh, what wouldn't you know it? Quarters. You love quarters. Look at me, T Bob. So that's why there's no it's, it's kind of like a covers match situation. So they're kind of playing covers to the strong side, but then so playing explain man it so matched to me because they because uh that's in NCAA and is it how does how does a zone match work? Like how's it different than just having a zone? Like, like does it like work like a lot man? of times like like you're like Seattle used to do this a lot with cover three. They play a lot of cover three match. So you're playing a certain type of coverage on the outside. So your shell looks. So you can see at the bottom, you're, you got your, it ends up being three by one, but the guys at the bottom, we got a safety corner and a curl flat defender, all playing quarters. Now we're matching the inside guys. So basically you can see Mason Taylor has got somebody matched man onto him. The running back has a guy matched face. He should, probably should be man on him. Yeah. Ideally. And then we got a, let's see here. So we used to call this an F look. So they're bringing a pressure. Okay. So they're bringing a pressure, but they're only rushing four. I was going to say, it's only so four it's like, though. Like strong dog. We call it strong okay. dog F. The F would be like they're only rushing four. So, but it's still a strong dog. So you're, they're, yeah. still, they're still bringing a yeah. backer, right? Yeah. right? They're dropping somebody. So um, that's what we, we would always throw the F at the end of the pressure on that. And uh, when do you, when does Nuss see that? Uh, when do you rewind it? Tell you don't have to keep taking it off the screen. Just keep rewinding it. Um, when does Nuss see? I mean, it's now a, it's, it's he's a great won. look. So this is probably a lot of film study. They probably saw this coverage. So he's God, probably look how look, quick his release. He's probably looking at the safety to the to the strong side and seeing that he's pretty high. So he might even be thinking they're running some sort of cover two or cover two invert on the back side with cover two front side. Well, anyway, once they once they bring the pressure, he knows he's he's got somebody covering man to man. And so, watch this backer or this safety, this backside safety, trying to cover Mason Taylor. So there's a point where we're, you're taught as a quarterback and a receiver, there's a transition period for a defensive back, linebacker, safety that's in coverage on a vertical route. When they flip their hips, when they flip the their hips, so at some period? point they uh, defensive defensive have to backpedal. Or they have to go move laterally yeah. to get even with a receiver. And then they have to, if a, if a receiver's going deep, they have to flip their hips, turn their shoulders and head, transition to going backwards to running forwards. So they have to turn, obviously. And so they're, when they turn, we call it the transition period. So if you throw this on time, the defender's head and back is towards the quarterback. Yeah. They can't see yeah, it. Yeah, they now, can't if see Garrett, if Garrett waits and hitches an extra time and doesn't throw it on time, that's when you see the DBs being able to get their head around, make a play on the ball. That's what makes really good 
nickelbacks in the NFL really good is their trans they, they shorten up that transition mm. period. They can flip their hips and shoulders and get their head around immediately. Um, a lot of times safeties can't do that as well. Linebackers can't do that as well. That's why really good tight ends, finding good matchups, and then really good offensive coordinators being able to find matchups with good receivers. Like think about when Jamar Chase was at LSU. Get them matched up on a safety or linebacker. That's uh, <laughs> that's kind of what you always look for. But that's what how the back shoulder on the outside is on on short fades as well. A DB yeah, has you know, to go from a back yeah, pedal. Fi- yeah. They have to go from a back pedal to running forward at some point. So as soon as they flip their hips is when quarterbacks like to throw it. Uh, okay, now what about this second throw on the touchdown to Aaron Anderson, which, uh, again, the – I'd like the to ability him. to put it over 32 there is insane. You, yeah. you think that did, did he see him go, go to the second one, Taylor? I think 32. He probably got a little deeper than Garrett thought, but Oof. the way Garrett throws it, so you have to to be able to do that. We call how that, in the world. So you have to be able to get it up and up, like up and down really quick. Yeah. Right? So you have to have really good mechanics. You have to have a tight spiral. You have to have the, the nose of the ball has to be pointed perfectly to do that. So you have to be able to throw it really well for just the physics to work and the ball to be get, able to go up and down. Yeah. It going that fast. Yeah, because it doesn't float. It, it, now, that, like, it sinks that perfectly. being able to say it, I'd like to look you in the eye and say, did you see him? <laughs> you see that guy? Uh, go back to me. What's, what's the little pump for uh, at, the, at the very beginning? He just gives a little... A little, a little. Who's he trying to influence there? See. Actually, Garrett. Taylor, can you pick up my surface? I actually think that like the Y copy is just as impressive of a throw, almost. I think this is a uh, cheese. So it's like a little sluggo scene. Okay, so like, a little sluggo on the bottom. A little sluggo, and he's just trying to get that safety out of there. Yeah, I mean they're running. This is almost like there's an old school play that the, the Saints used to run in a bunch of Drew Brees. Sluggo seam. It's basically seven man protection, three receiver route, and I never understood why it worked all the time. Mm. Basically, your footwork goes. You're gonna pump the the sluggo yeah. backside. And for a sluggo's a slant and go, yeah, guys. So you fake the slant, and then you and then like look at is that Kyron on the bottom? Yeah. So you're yeah. always gonna pump it, no matter what. Not even even if you're gonna throw it to him. It's just how your footwork works. The timing of your footwork. Every pass play. Not every three-step drop is created equal. There's a different three-step drop for this pass than there is for that pass. But for this route, for the timing of it is you look left, you pump, you see this bottom safety go with the pump. And now we know because it's quarters coverage and quarters is terrible, we all know, (laughs) that that guy's going to be one-on-one with the safety. Oh, what a now, throw. What man, a read. This what is a, a This is also a six-man protect. Guys. This is a six-man protection against – Yeah, they, they ended up releasing – You know, a very light rush. It's only it, three it's probably supposed to be It's probably be, supposed to be seven. He just gets out yeah. because yeah, no one's yeah. coming. Nobody's right? coming. Um, you love seven-man protection. Love seven-man protection. LSU's done a better job. I mean, the, the, the one year they were awful with it. They, they, do, they do a good job, I think, of mixing it up yeah, right now. Do. And the backs are doing a good job of not wasting themselves and getting out as an outlet. I think traditionally the outside receiver to the top would just run like a hitch route. Now they change him to a curl route, which I kind of like here. But I'd like to see the back release the other direction. So this is similar to that Saints play you were talking about. Though. This so, is very so, similar. Like, so why, did, just why does play. it always work? It then? is like an old school, yeah, just like, like a classic route combo. Nineties, like West Coast type situation. Yeah. So why does it work then? Do you think so it's consistently? A good question. I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I did just because I get. The reason why I say I don't know, it's a great route combination because especially if you got a team that's playing a lot of quarters like this, even a team that plays a lot of cover too. Um, but I'm so against seven-man protections most yeah. of the time. And the Saints used to do it with Sean Payton and Drew Brees so much. They would run seven-man protection, five-man slide the offensive lineman, put the tight end in the back on a, a kick-ass defensive end and a backer. <laughs> and I'm like, this sh- – why – why yeah. are they doing this? Yeah. And then it would just work. And that was, you know, because you had really smart Drew Brees, you had like a, a Colston that would find the hole. Yeah. You have to have really good receivers. And, you know, I think just watching the wide copy here, Garrett made this throw probably a little harder. I mean, look at all that space he's got. I mean, he could he could kind of just lay he it could, up he could, he could lay it up, put even more air on it and just yeah. kind of lay it out there. And then it, it, you're either going to get a, yeah. Jeez, Aaron Anderson. Glad to see Aaron Anderson get in the end yeah. zone finally as well. Uh, he, he's had so many good moments this year. He's been working so hard. You love see him, uh, seeing him rewarded with a tutty. Um, all right, well, that was an excellent breakdown. 
of two great throws. That's what we love having Matt on, you know? Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.